I went ahead and finished up more of the open input plugin, well, not plugin, module. And I wanted to go over the setup for people because it's changed significantly since I've cleaned it up now. And now I support two hands. So I figured I'd load up the editor and I would show in um, on the 2D pawn, since I can sit at my desk then, how to set up the hand animations. So you take your pawn, you, there's a setup.txt file that comes with the module and it contains the initial setup instructions. There's a um, config file entry need, that you need to add that turns off normal input and adds this one. And there's some mesh files that you can import to make it easier because you already have the hand meshes then. But assuming you've already done all that, this is how you'd actually get it into a character. Um, you'd add a component and you'd add open input skeletal mesh. And then you're going to set that to either your hand mesh or whatever has the hand bones on it. I'm going to show a full mannequin because um, that shows off both methods at once. So I have a full mannequin here. I have an animation blueprint already set up for him, which let's open that one up. Okay, so this animation blueprint under class settings has been reparented to open input animation instance, which you can manually pass in the action information to it, but this way um, it lets it automatically do it. It'll automatically pull it from the skeletal mesh that's attached to. And it's a lot cleaner and quicker and there's less data being passed in and you don't use the blueprint graph at all. So um, I reparented it to that and then over in the graph here I apply open input transform and you need one per hand. Um, they're both UE4 bone sets because this is a UE4 mannequin so I have the right hand and the left hand on UE4 and then there's open VR default left and right if this was an open VR bone structure and then you can even do type custom and um, do custom bones instead in map to bone pairs here you can map your own bones but I'm not gonna get into that because very few people are actually gonna require that skip root bone is here for um, full mannequins I might move this eventually into the um, skeletal mesh itself so it's easier to get to it makes it so that the root bone for the hands, which is normally um, on the UE4 skeleton, it's this wrist bone here, it does not move with the animation, so it stays static. And you don't want that to move because if it, you move it to its uh, expected translation, since this is the extent bone here, it's going to move back to the elbow. So I just have skip root bone on for this, and if you're doing just a hand mesh, you have skip root bone off. Like I said, I'll probably move that over into the actual uh, skeletal mesh action later. So I've got a uh, left hand going into right hand component pose, going into component to local into the final animation pose. These are all the nodes that's needed. Like I said, if you're doing just one hand, you just have one of these nodes. You can hook it up in line with you know IK or whatever else you're running. So it has the correct skeletal animation blueprint. I've got the correct mesh. Now we need to add some hand actions. So down under skeletal data, we have hand skeletal actions. And I'll add an element. Uh, you can either get it with a controller or not. I'll do both ways. Action name, you leave blank if you're using all the auto setup, and it'll auto fill that in. If you're doing a custom engine version or something where you're handwriting out your own action manifest, or you have a different uh, skeletal action name than what I auto generate, then you can put it in here and it'll use that instead. Uh, skeletal data is the important stuff. Um, so we'll do the left hand. Controller started off. There we go. So we'll do the left hand first. So left hand on a full body mannequin, you need to mirror it because the bone space are both going in the same direction, but on a full body mannequin, it's actually 180 degrees around. So you need to mirror the left hand. You don't want to deform mesh on UE4 skeletons, but I'll show you why, I'll leave that ticked. And then get transforms in parent space will mean make it actually stick in a line with the arm here. That's what keeps it attached to um, this arm bone here. If you didn't have get transforms in parent space, then it would um, just do it all in component space and it'd be wrong. But that's all for the initial setup is that hand action. So we'll go out to the map and we'll hit play. And I got the mannequin in front of me. 
and I've got hand animations on the left hand. Now you notice how those fingers are a little messed up and they're offset? It's because, um, well, one, we're not moving the wrist bone so it's not angled with it. But two, it's because we're offsetting the mesh and UE4, these default UE4 mannequins and hands don't have um, bone weighting, like uh, weighting to the bones. So knuckles don't move with the actual like animated knuckle movement. So it doesn't really look good, which is why allow deforming mesh should be off for this mannequin specifically, which as you can see, looks significantly better. It's no longer shifting with what OpenVR is telling it it should be at, and it's just staying um, in line with the hand. Then you're gonna to wanna to add the right hand. So you hit it again. Uh, this one won't have a controller, so you can see the difference. Hand right, parent space, no deform. And you don't mirror the right hand. Um, I mean, if you have a mesh face in the opposite direction, maybe you'll mirror the right hand. I, I don't have, it's just on default assets in UE4, you don't. You go back in, and then you have this, and you got both hands. The right hand of the mannequin is now be able to fully clench because it's um, not with controller mode. And then the left hand is set up to wrap around the controller. It's simulating, it's holding one, so it can't fully clench. And that's how you set up the animations on it. It's way simpler now than it used to be with this. So I figured I'd put out a video showing how to do that. For things like uh, gestures, um, gestures recorded. I have a gestures database here with gestures that I've recorded. I've only recorded like two because I redid this a while ago. And if that's assigned to the skeletal mesh, it'll check um, for these gestures on every tick against these skeletal actions that you have added. So I've got two skeletal actions here and they'll be checked against these gestures. So on the event graph, you can go into this open skeletal mesh and on new gesture detected, you can print out, let's just do the name of the gesture that was detected. And then you should be able to take one of the controllers. Yeah, Spider-Man. I'm doing the Spider-Man pose where it's got two fingers up and then your thumb up. And then I get out of the pose, it quits the gesture, and I go back into it, and it brings it up again. Uh, these I haven't calibrated these knuckles in a while. They've been sitting on my desk, so that's why my pinky's not quite as accurate as it should be. You notice after I've um, clenched my hands a few times, the fingers are more accurate, and that's the knuckles. That's the thought driver calibrating. So I get much better uh, gesture detection after that. So that's how you use the gesture system. If you want to record a gesture, then you take the skeletal mesh and you save current pose. You choose hand left or right. It'll choose whichever action it first runs into that matches left or right hand. And then you recording name. And then um, if you want to record only curl, which you do because there is no splay on any current controllers. And then it'll save it to the um, gesture database that's linked in here. And then the gesture database, you can change the name later. You can manually tweak per finger values, like a thumb value from zero to one on curl, you know, whatever you want to do with it. Like for Spider-Man, thumbs all the way curled in, so it's a um, value of zero. I mean, it's all the way out, so it's a value of zero. One would be all the way in. Threshold is within a threshold that it detects. I do a sane default and you can update it then later. And that's it. That's how you do the gestures. You can manually get poses out of the open input skeletal mesh by, um, oh, you can also detect gestures manually. You can uh, detect current pose to manually check one, but it's better just to let it automatically do it if you can. And you can also um, get skeletal action. I don't remember the name of this function actually. There's a function to get the skeletal action from open input. Um, open input. But I don't actually remember the name of it, so. Yeah, yeah, get action pose. 
yeah, you can actually manually pass in a skeletal action that you define and um, it'll fill it out with all the information and then you can use that and pass it into your animation blueprint for the character or for the mesh if you didn't want to assign it to um, the open input animation instance and then I have it auto run everything you just hook that up here instead or, or you if you even keep the same setup and you get the skeletal mesh and you get the um, hand actions from it you could pass these into it too and that would work that's the basics um, it's pretty easy to use the setup instructions contain everything I figured I'd release this publicly now that it's somewhat you know tolerable to use I was holding off for a while waiting for epic or valve to do something and they kind of haven't really so I decided I'd just clean it up and finish it as I had some downtime right now um, that's pretty much it you can take a one of these elements if you want and you can like delete it and now we're down to just one hand being animated in here which is the left and do whatever you want with it so I'll link to it in this video and I'll also link to it in my main plugin page and I'll consider it a uh, release now I still got work to do on it but I mean it's functional